So I've divided my painting into four equal sections. I've divided them up with washi tape. I'm using hot press, 100% cotton watercolour paper. And this is kind of like a lolly stick, just a little wooden stick here. You can use a ruler or even a piece of card. And I've dipped it into all of those colours there on the left, black, Prussian blue, compost blue and French ochre. As I say, the colours can be found in the description below with alternatives. And I'm swiping this onto the wet surface that I applied with clean water and with a large brush. I've actually applied puddles there. And I'm just sort of swiping and experimenting here using that sort of stick to sort of press into that paint there, getting all the different colours and then pressing them onto the paper, printing it really. And there's some wet areas and dry areas so there's puddles and I'm losing lots of control but it's a really nice way of using leftover paint I had loads left over from a previous tutorial I'll put a link for that tutorial in the description below it was fun to do of a cityscape so I thought it'd be quite nice to continue using these colours and these colours are straight from the tube. I quite like using tube paint when I'm doing this technique, especially using a plastic card. I like plenty of paint. And if your paint does um, dry out a little bit, you can re-wet it using a spritzer bottle there and continue with this technique. And as you can see here, I'm printing with a plastic card, just marks, rectangular marks, playing around with different ideas. It's quite nice actually dividing your watercolour painting up into four or even more than four so you can experiment with different marks etc and hopefully it'll build confidence and inspire you to be creative trying out different things. What I quite like it's almost a continuous painting so you can actually divide it up into different sections and then sort of paint the whole thing and then find mini paintings within. It's quite a nice way of venturing into abstract painting. And you can actually, again, even divide these up into even smaller paintings. The bottom two paintings here, I'm gonna keep simple. I'm just gonna sort of paint a little bit more on here, maybe a touch more later, just scratching here with my plastic card. The top two, I'm gonna sort of give them a little bit more attention, experiment a little bit more. I love tilting and spritzing and just to see what happens re-wetting the watercolor it mixes the paint the colors actually on the paper and you get these different sort of wetness very wet puddles and drying puddles and you get back runs and normally I always try to tell students how to avoid back runs but in this instance I kind of like all the textures so as you can see here the bottom two are quite simple quite atmospheric and quite abstract and the top two I love painting cityscapes so I'm kind of going in that direction I'm just going to see what happens just using these four colours a spritzer bottle plastic card and plenty of tilting. It's always a good idea now to allow your paintings to dry to assess to see if you need to do any more to the painting. So I'm actually using the card again and the paint straight from the tube and I'm gliding it onto the dry surface and I've decided to paint some buildings there using the black, the Prussian blue and the compost blue. You could use cerulean and Payne's grey with a phthalo blue or whatever colours you fancy. 
and again I'm using the plastic card over here and I've actually applied a little bit of water to the card to dilute the paint a little bit it was a bit too dry and this is a little bit of the black and the pale blue again going for these sort of abstract buildings tapping the card into the paint there and sort of swiping it on but also painting reflections as well there just printing and swiping with the card with having the various colours on there and printing sort of thinner lines with the card as well. Just using the spritzer bottle again to sort of soften some of those reflections um, and tilting away from the other paintings as well and mopping up afterwards. I'm also spritzing the buildings on the left hand mini painting there as well just to soften here and there and just wipe up any excess paint there. Um, don't worry, this isn't my dining room table. This is just a, a large drawing board that I use for my painting. So I think it's a good idea again to allow the paintings to dry. I'm using white gouache and I'm printing this onto the dry surface there, onto the buildings to create lighter windows. And if you feel it's a little bit too much, you can always spritz off again to soften some of those areas as well. Just experimenting here, I've decided to spatter with my hog hair brush, rubbing my fingertip against the fully loaded brush. It's got some white gouache on it there. And now I'm printing some buildings. It's quite damp here. So I've just applied some of the black and blue there to really sort of reapply the painting of the buildings. I lost them a little bit here. So I'm painting some buildings on the right hand side as well there and adding some cranes in there, printing some dark linear marks in and around the buildings. I'm going to do the same on the left hand side here printing some of that white there. You could use pastels or white acrylic paint to do this as well but it just gets back some of that light you may have lost in your painting. So I am giving this painting a little spatter here on the left hand side, a little bit on the right, a little bit of a flick over there on the right hand painting. But the spattering stops me from overthinking and overworking my painting. So I've actually spattered the bottom paintings as well. It almost looks like the sea and some rocks and maybe a pier or something. Um, but it's quite nice. The spatter gives it a little bit of movement. This one here is extremely abstract. I really disciplined myself not to do too much to this painting. So it can be whatever you want it to be or just a pure abstract painting. I couldn't resist having another little spritz here. So I'm spritzing the white down, just being careful it doesn't run into my abstract below. That's why I'm turning it around here and spritzing um, so it drips off onto the table. So I thought I'd take off the washi tape to reveal a white border and it'll give me a good chance to see if I need to do any more to these paintings. I couldn't resist, I had to have one last spatter onto the damp surface here to create a little bit more light and texture and a little bit of sparkle as well. So I've decided to dry the paintings to have one more look at them before I made any more decisions. Now I'm really pleased with the outcome and I would love to be able to paint some of these on a larger scale as well. Um, I felt that the top right hand painting need a little bit more light in the windows. So instead of using the white gouache or any more spattering, I thought it'd be quite nice to use a craft knife to actually scratch out the paper to physically scratch off the paint it actually is permanent so it does slightly damage the paper so do be careful and make sure your painting is absolutely dry so here I'm using my little craft knife here and I'm just sort of gently scratching the surface of the paper so it does sort of tear it slightly so just do this very slowly and do if you're going to do this technique do practice it on a rough piece of paper I wouldn't want you to gouge a hole into your painting which you were proud of so make sure you feel comfortable doing this technique but it is quite effective and it really does bring back the white and light of the paper even though it's slightly scuffed and what I will say is you can't really paint on top of this afterwards now because it's like blotting paper so as you can see I'm just scratching in some sort of highlights in the water some reflections and just some abstracting marks as well now just a little warning 
Um, I used to use this technique a lot years ago and I did stop using it because I felt I always got a bit carried away with it because it was so effective and then you realise that you've used too much of it and you've pr practically torn half your painting so you know less is more with this technique so I've straight away gone on to this painting here I've actually haven't put very much on that top left painting and just a little here on this abstract to the right as well it didn't really need any more I just couldn't stop myself really it is quite irresistible um, but here are the finished paintings a close-up view I, I quite like all the colors I love that bottom left hand painting especially because it's hardly been painted at all it's just so fresh and simple I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click on patreon.com forward slash Karen Rice Art. You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials, line drawings and ad free content and you can cancel anytime. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.